All right, all right, all right, folks. This is Pete, your host, and welcome to another Zentegra Webinar Wednesdays. For those who are returning and for those that are new, welcome. Uh, this is a weekly thing we do every week at 11 o'clock. We feature a vendor and a topic. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Microsoft licensing. And I was joking earlier with my uh, my co-speakers today that you know I think I have a PhD in Microsoft licensing because I've done a lot of research and reading over the last few weeks to get my head around this and hopefully you find this helpful uh, today. Um, so uh, my name for those who don't know me is Pete Downing. I'm the host and CMTO of Zentegra uh, and for those returning, thanks for returning. Uh, for those that are new, welcome. And uh, I have two guests today and one of my guests had to step away really quick. He had a minor uh, customer emergency so hopefully he's back on but if not we'll introduce him uh, ourselves, but uh, I'll start with Jody first. So Jody, if you want to give yourself a quick I'm back, uh, Pete. Cool, thanks, sir. Uh, Jody, you want to give yourself a quick intro? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Happy Hump Day. Uh, okay. as, as Pete said, uh, my name is Jody Elkins. I'm the president of the Americas region, a company called Incentra, and we are a, a strategic partner with Integra, uh, and we we do a, a handful of things, all the way from. Microsoft fast track services to uh, standard sort of basic migrations all the way into uh, very complex migrations, including archive migrations and uh, strategic engagements around the adoption and enablement of uh, Microsoft 365. Cool. And what's the fun fact about you guys? You guys are one of the largest Microsoft Gold partners in the in the world, but don't actually transact, right? Yeah, yeah. To my knowledge, we're the only uh, gold certified partner globally that's never sold a single license or uh, consumed a, a, a single partner of record from Microsoft. And if you know anything about Microsoft, the only way they really have to judge success of a partner uh, is by license sales or partner of record uh, on Azure and, and O365 consumption. And uh, so, so that's quite a feat, makes us pretty unique. And in, 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 in to that point, uh, being a strategic partner with Integra, we are a 100% channel services model organization. So that means we only work with uh, really fantastic partners like Zintegra uh, around the world. Cool. Well, thanks for uh, joining us, Jody, today. And uh, also on the phone, I got Trevor. Trevor, you want to give yourself a quick intro? I call him Big Trev. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, Trevor, Trevor Mansell, I lead um, the service provider side of our of Zentegra. Um, that includes our managed services um, and, uh, and hosting. And um, part of that is the, uh, you know, a big part of that is the Microsoft piece. So our strategic vendors are uh, Microsoft, Citrix, and um, in, in that kind of in that, that order. Cool. Well, uh, thanks for joining us today, Trevor. I know you got a, you're busy, uh, so I appreciate you taking an hour out of your time today. Uh, so just quick housekeeping. Uh, we are on GoToWebinar, uh, and in the dialog box, there is a question and answer box that you can insert questions, and uh, we always keep an eye on those and try to answer any and all questions to the best of our knowledge. And if we can't, we try to follow up with you post-webinar. Uh, so definitely ask questions today. Uh, this is a fun topic. And we're going to try to keep it as entertaining as possible because, hey, it's licensing. How can we make licensing entertaining? Um, I was going to challenge you on that, Pete. I don't know <laughs> if it's exactly a fun topic, but it's definitely a necessary one. <laughs> yeah. So today, a little different uh, flow than recent weeks. Uh, you know, we're going to talk wholly about kind of licensing. And, you know, I, I, again, we'll try to keep it as fun and, and more pod. This is going to be more podcasty today. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got a great, great panel, and uh, I'm excited to talk about this. Uh, before we dive in, uh, definitely head over to zentegra.com forward slash webinars. Uh, we got a great lineup uh, through the end of the summer, and I'm actually building out September and October now. Uh, and we're continuing uh, the webinar Wednesdays uh, through the end of the year. So we're going to continue to feature uh, new partners that we bring on, new technologies, new updates, uh, et cetera. So definitely track uh, that page. Uh, and then also, for those who aren't aware, we are doing what's called the Team Launch Giveaway. Uh, and, it, and it's highlighted in the email that you hopefully received uh, that says, you know, how do you earn Grubhub credits? Uh, and, uh, and then also, how do you get a chance to win lunch for your, your whole team? So a uh, pretty cool giveaway. Uh, and again, we, there are some, some you know, criteria that you have to meet. So you know, please work with us if you're 
uh, if you're using a non-business email, uh, et cetera. All right, we, we have to do this obviously for checks and balances and also for the vendors who are helping us uh, pay for this. Um, finally, we got zentegra.com forward slash events. Check out the events coming up. We got a lot of great events. I'm actually working on, I won't, I'm, I'm gonna keep it very vague, but I'm working on two new events. So keep an eye out for those. And they're gonna be what I like to call mini workshops. So uh, working on those, uh, hopefully launching those in late Q3 and the early Q4. Uh, and then finally, Andy, our founder and CEO, loves to do podcasts. Uh, we had two podcasts drop in the last uh, week. So definitely go head over to uh, zentegra.com forward slash podcast. Uh, the focus uh, is what's called the Citrix session. Um, and it's very focused on Citrix topics. Uh, this week, we launched a podcast that was focused on app protection, uh, the new product that Citrix launched. And it, and it highlights the product manager who is on that product. So definitely check it out. They range from as quick as 15 minutes all the way up to 30 minutes, um, usually on average. Some go a little longer, but most are around the 20 to 30 minute mark. So pretty cool uh, and pretty entertaining. All right, so let's get the audience involved. Uh, I like to always ask polls and get some feel for the audience. Uh, so the first poll uh, is kind of simple. You know, and, and you know, obviously if you're not an enterprise and you can't answer, you know, obviously don't, but um, my enterprise currently has a Microsoft Enterprise agreement in place. And so this is just more for the audience, you know, the, the panel here to understand the makeup of our audience. So we're going to give us a couple seconds. And uh, once we uh, get at least 50%, I like to get 50% of people involved. That way we get some good stats. Um, we can, I'll share the results. So last call for clicks. And again, people can't see who's responding. Uh, people can't see each other, so don't worry. All data is anonymous. And going once, going twice in last call. And I'm gonna share it. So we got a lot of folks with uh, EA agreements in place. We're gonna talk about, you know, the you know what it, why and what is an EA, but more importantly, if you're in the smaller tier, like you know, I'd say you're in this like you're you're on this border of hey, I got an EA, but I'm not huge, I'm not a large enterprise, but uh, I know I I get value from it. You know, do I need it? Uh, we'll we'll kind of talk a little bit about that today, uh, and kind of highlight the the muddy waters that is Microsoft uh, licensing. Um, all right, the next one is: Are you familiar with? Azure Hybrid Use Benefit, the Azure Hybrid Use Benefit, uh, AKA Azure Hybrid Rights. They, they, the technical name is Hub, but they, you, can all, you might have heard it as Hybrid Rights as well. Um, so again, this is more to understand, you know, do you understand what this is? Because if you don't, this is a great way to save money if you're gonna start looking at Azure. So we'll give this a couple more seconds. Again, try to get 50% participation a lot of people are sleeping today and i'm going to say final call for clicks so going once twice and final call and done all right so we got a lot of folks who don't know what hybrid rights is so i'm going to talk about that at the very end uh, i'll talk about you know the hybrid rights slash hub and you know just give you an idea of what it is and what you need to consider uh, when you're looking at renegotiating your your EAs or just licensing in general and Trevor you know we have a great insight on a recent customer we just work with as well um, all right my uh, my enterprise uses office 365 today and so pick the one that best meets your needs so uh, you know are you a hybrid shop you're on-prem in the cloud or just on-prem pick the first option uh, your exchange online you're currently deploying uh, or you're staying on prem for right now uh, or you're a Google Chrome Enterprise shop. We're going to give us a couple seconds. Again, this helps uh, the panel uh, understand it. And actually, next week we have a session dedicated just on Office 365 and some of the updates that have come out in the recent months. So we're going to talk about that. And I have Jody and Trevor and a guy named Andy coming on next week. So great panel next week. All right, going once, going twice, last call for questions. All right, and share. 
So we got a lot of folks with Exchange Online. We got a mix of folks. I'd say it's almost even if we take the 30% and the 9% and you know we put those together, we're even for people that are still kind of hybrid on-prem. And then we got some no, a lot of no's on radar. So this is something that we're gonna try to address next week, uh, definitely. So if you're interested in understanding how do you get to Office 365 fully and efficiently, definitely join next week. We're gonna talk about you know, things like uh, how do you migrate your off mailboxes, the license considerations, uh, what's going to happen with ex exchange, stuff like that. So we're going to we're going to highlight some of those things. And, you know, I got a great panel for next week. All right. Final question. Uh, my enterprise is evaluating or using Azure infrastructure as a service. So not, you know, don't pick SQL, Azure AD infrastructure as a service. So you're actually running compute inside of Azure. All right. Um, and just, you know, again, more of a curiosity data question, but this actually plays into that hub question I asked earlier. Um, and this is something that's big, like, you know, Trevor, you know, maybe later we'll share the use case. We can't say the customer, but we just helped migrate a customer over to Azure and we had this kind of rejig their licensing. So they got more bang for their buck. Um, and we will talk a little bit about that. All right. So last call for questions, uh, for clicks going once going twice and final call. All right, so we got a lot of folks, uh, believe it or not, in the in the no column. So that's uh, interesting. So a lot of no's, some in the yes that you're using it for production. So awesome, we'd love to hear folks using Azure. And then in the top end, 20 to 25%, uh, we're in a test lab or evaluating it. Now, one thing I will say, a little asterisk and a little commercial here, if you're evaluating Azure, and or you're looking to evaluate WBD, please reach out. We can probably get you some funds uh, that will help you, uh, you know, augment some of the costs of piloting different scenarios. So definitely reach out, uh, you, you know, you'll hook up with Trevor and or I, and we'll talk you through some of the programs that Microsoft is offering right now around evaluating uh, Azure and WBD for that matter. So, all right, well, that's uh, the polls I have for today. So those who join me, you know, I like polls, I like data. Um, and for uh, and I appreciate everybody playing, and we may reference some of these later on. Uh, if you're not following uh, Zentegra or Incentra or Microsoft on social media, you definitely want to. Um, so give us a follow. Little shout out to the YouTube channel. These webinars do eventually make their way up to uh, the YouTube channel. Um, so if you head over to Zentegra, the Zentegra YouTube channel, you'll see an archive of all the webinars we've done uh, since I started this this uh, flow. All right, so let's talk about enterprise agreements and when they make sense. And you know, again, I have a great panel today, and we're going to kind of take you through some of the some of the thought process around Microsoft licensing. And post event, I will share a couple of resources I found that are very helpful uh, when considering um, you know uh, programs, uh, you know, the different uh, licensing scenarios. And then if you get on the phone with the Tremor and or I, we can actually talk you through what makes sense and i've been on the phone with trevor and, and man you're pretty good trevor at it so a little compliment to you so you know when you uh when you're looking at licensing and you know one of the biggest things you got to consider is you know how big are you guys like how big is the company um another play another thing you got to understand that plays into that is also not only how big you are but are you a single tenant aka single entity or do you have multiple entities? So that plays into the decision as well. So do you do a lot of acquisitions? Do you do, uh, do you have a lot of, uh, you know, umbrella companies underneath you? Um, so that plays into the decision as well. So there's a lot of factors that play into the size and type of company. Um, and then in the middle is, you know, what products do you really want to leverage? Is Microsoft strategic to your stack? Is it not? Are you Exchange Shop? Are you a Google Chrome Shop? So that plays into it as well. So you could be a 5,000, see enterprise customer and you're a Google Chrome shop. So you might not need a full EA agreement, right? Um, and it might not make sense. So there's things like that that you got to consider is what are you using and how are you using it? And then finally usage, right? Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> you know, look at the stack as a whole and what are you going to use? How are you going to use it? Do you really need the whole stack? Uh, are you just looking for email? Um, and if you are, there's, there's different office strategies you can do. Uh, are you looking for, uh, you know, just server OSs in your, in your smaller shop? There's different stacks you can do for there. So again, these are the things you need to consider. And again, nothing new here, but just putting it out there so that we're all on the same page. 
Um, so, you know, I always, you know, so size in this case does matter, right? And if you're under 250 users and or devices, that's where you really need to start really thinking about, well, how are you gonna license uh, your Microsoft products? And that's where a, a conversation is gonna come into play in a second, where we'll talk about what's called the service provider offering, right? And then in the middle, it's kind of a little bit ambiguous here, but greater than 250 devices. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more detail in a second, um, because yeah, I know like 500 plays into that. Well, you know, there, there's some things you can do if you're greater than 250 devices, uh, and you're gonna you're you want to get more flexibility. So again, the theme there would be flexibility. And then finally, if you're greater than 500, uh, that's where kind of you start getting into that. Do I do an EA or not? And I would argue if you're on the lower end of the tier of that count, you really need to rethink. Do you need an EA? And does it make sense? Because you're spending a lot of money, and are you getting the full mileage out of it? And Trevor made an interesting comment. One of the other hidden benefits of an EA is the education you get. So there's things like that that you have to consider. Um, so here's kind of the different licensing uh, buckets that play into the things. And I wanna talk about all these, but if you look on the, the far left here, you got you know what's called your open license. And under open licenses, there's all different types of open license. There's open value subscription, open value, uh, et cetera. So there's different ways to structure uh, the open license. And by the way, there's there's different structures for government and education as well. So if you want to do a follow-up, we can kind of take you through, you know, the differences between the education side and the government side. And, I, and I, I'm going to guess if you're in the government sector, you got a whole team that does this. So you don't even need to talk to us. But at the end of the day, yes, there are different structures even below this around education and government. Um, and I'm going to share a white paper I found that highlights this, by the way, as far as, as part of the follow-up. Um, in the middle, you got, you know, users and devices, uh, again, education, there is an option there. Um, there's some really, by the way, if you're in education, you definitely want to read the fine print. There are some really cool enablement things you can do for the students, uh, et cetera. So I, I, I mean, it's funny, I started reading some of the stuff and I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that. Um, so it's pretty cool. So definitely if you're in education, make sure you read what you're entitled to. Um, but really the one that plays heavily here is the Microsoft product and services agreement and then what's called Select Plus. So those two kind of go hand in hand. Uh, Select Plus is only available for academic and government now, um, by the way. So again, that's a whole other tier. Uh, and then finally, yeah, at 500, there's Microsoft Enterprise Agreements, and there's two buckets here. There's, you know, you pay for it or you do a subscription model. Um, so there's two ways you can bucket the Enterprise Agreement, and, and there's different ways that you can, you can tackle your EA. All right, so I, you know, I break it down, and uh, I just want to level set, and I want to throw a question out there for Trevor and team. Um, is you know, here's the, here's your Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. A lot of you have one, or very probably very familiar with this, and uh, you know, your year. So you you lock in, you lock in hard, right? And so you want to make sure you negotiate and you get the best bang for your buck when you negotiate this. Um, in, in, you know, government, you, it, the minimum is 250. And then obviously in commercial, it's 500. So you need to be very mindful of, again, your size and your type. But another thing you need to be considered of is, are you a multi-entity organization? So do you have different legal entities under one umbrella? And if you do, then an EA makes sense because you can share the licenses across the entities, where if you're doing a single open license, you can't. So there's a lot of things you got to consider just from a legality point of view. And again, I'm not a lawyer, um, but, you know, reading the EULAs and all that kind of stuff, I, I've learned a lot, to be honest with you. Um, but one of the other big things is software assurance. So EA comes included with SA. So keep that in mind. So if you're big on you want to have that SA, you want to be able to, you know, have support, et cetera, then, then in, in Microsoft is very strategic to your stack then an EA you know, definitely makes sense. And is it pricey? Yeah, it is. But if you do it right and get the full mileage out of it, you get your, you get your ROI on TCO. Um, the next level is what's called Microsoft Products and Services Agreements. Now, what's cool about this one, and, and if you notice, this is a commitment, right? So you do a commitment and it's three year. Open, you know, this product and services agreement is transactional, right? So it's non-expiring, you're, you're as needed. So you have a lot of flexibility. I'm gonna summarize this up in a second. Um, and so this is a little more 
I call it like the ad as you go, pay as you go model. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this in a second around the CSP and where that fits, right? And um, you have to uh, you have to have at least 250 users or more. Um, and um, this gives you a lot more flexibility. So, you know, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. If you're a Google Chrome shop, do you really need an EA? Maybe this is a better fit, right? So yeah, you're Google Chrome shop, you're all in with Google and you need some Microsoft products to kind of augment your stack, then maybe this is an option. That's something to consider, right? Um, so, you know, definitely keep this in the back of your minds as you start looking at, um, you know, if, you're, if your term's coming up. And again, you're probably working with a large, what we call LAR, because they're the only ones who are allowed to sell EAs. They have great teams to help navigate the muddy waters of an EA agreement. Um, now, one of the things you'll notice here is the software assurance is optional. So it's an add-on cost. So that's something to think about as you start looking at products and services separate and doing transactional based approach. Um, now, the other thing is open agreements. So this is typically where if you're under 500 or under 250, um, you, you're gonna fall into this bucket, okay? And, and then this is where Trevor and our team can help you figure out what makes sense. Do you wanna do your own agreement or do you wanna do it through a CSP, an MCSP, a Microsoft Cloud Service Provider, right? Um, and so that's, so this is something to think about. If you're a smaller organization and you're thinking about, well, do I need to own the licenses? Do I want to, you know, do I just want to pay for what I'm going to use, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then this is something to keep in the back of your mind. And we'll give an example in a second um, on things you can do to, you know, leverage this. Um, you know, again, it's, it, there's different ways to structure it. So you can see like transactional or commitment based but the agreement term is not expiring if you're doing transactional uh, for two years. If you do a commitment base, it's three years. Or if you do uh, on print, you know, uh, the last option, it can be a one-year commit. So again, you, you, you can do as needed or organizing wide. So there's a lot more flexibility. So the theme of this one is flexibility. And you can see, you know, the biggest thing here is the, the payment options. So you can do upfront payments, you can do annual payments, and you can do financing as well. So if you're a smaller shop, and you need to kind of spread the, the payment love across different years, you can do that. And then CSP opens the door for a bunch of other options as well. So here's a kind of a quick summary, all right? And I'm gonna pause and make sure there's no questions, but as I talk about it, and I'll see if Trevor has any input as well before we start diving into CSP. But the first option is you wanna purchase licenses. So if you're under 250 users or devices, your only option is really the open license programs, right? Um, if you're above it, then you're looking at what's called a select agreement, okay? And again, you can see the, the key features. SA is optional. Uh, you get more choice here. Uh, you get a minimal discount. So your discounting leverage is a little bit less because you're not buying as much and you're not committing upfront. So your discounting gets a little bit more, you don't have as much leverage, right? Um, you have to have a minimum of five licenses. All right, and then, um, and again, this is per legal entity. So that means that if you're, if I'm Pete.com LLC, then I can only buy open licenses for Pete LLC, right? Um, and I can't share it with Trevor LLC, even though we're owned by Jody LLC, right? Um, so that's how it works. Uh, so again, keep that in mind as you, as you start, you know, looking at different options. And again, in this case, it's upfront. So if you're going to buy a license, if you go and say, hey, I need 10 licenses of Office, you know, or not Office, Server 2019, you're paying for those licenses up front, right? Um, so again, keep that in mind. The middle option is purchased over a three-year period. So this is assuming you're going to make some kind of commitment and you're going to purchase it over a three-year period. So this is where if you're over, if you're under 250 devices, you do what's called open value. Um, if you're above 250 devices, this is where EA comes into play. So if you're willing to make a commit in a three-year commit, then um, you, know, you, you need to start looking at enterprise agreements. And if you're 500 or higher, then definitely, you know, that's where for the commercial side, that's where you need to put, I should probably put parentheses 500. Um, so again, 250 is government, 500 is commercial. And again, the benefit here is SA is included. Um, your discounting is, is very, you know, depending on your size, your commitment level, et cetera, your discounting varies. Um, and uh, your, it, you know, this covers the whole enterprise. Now, the great thing about this is you can spread your payment, okay? 
Um, so you can spread the payment over a year. You can do it through financing. So it's, it's you know, it's a little more flexible if you're going to do a purchase and you do a commit up front. And then finally, uh, renting. So we're going to dive into this a little bit more, but you can also do what's called subscriptions. So you got open value subscription through Microsoft or what's called an enterprise agreement subscription. And again, you get the, a lot of the same value as the middle option. The key here is you can do what's called annual payments and depending on what level and how, how, how long you commit to will determine your discounting power. All right. So again, the, the three buckets, do you purchase? Do you purchase over and do a commitment or do you per, or rent and, and do a subscription? All right. So let's talk about another option. All right, and as I'm switching this, I'm going to do a call for questions. So final call for questions. Hey, um, Pete. Yep. Pete, I'll just make a comment there. I mean, so, I mean, the one thing to note here is, like, you know, Microsoft is obviously going through a transition from, you know, like everybody else to, to cloud. And and so what what makes this, this whole conversation super confusing for most people, uh, if it wasn't confusing enough before they made it, started making this transition, now we've got, We've got additional licensing models that they're transitioning to, right? So, yeah. um, and so you've got. So, bottom line, though, as they move to as we kind of look forward, and and we're, we're we go to a kind of a primary cloud uh, licensing model, um, subscription based. Um, really, what you know, what I've been told is it's going to be like CSP is going to expand to kind of cover the a larger you know, a larger group of customers. Enterprise will be here for probably, you know, a good while and that will, but ultimately what they're looking at is that that's going to cover like the, the largest, you know, largest customers, the ones that they have direct, you know, direct relationships with. Um, but for now, you kind of, you know, the good news is there's, there's good, op there's options. It's just the bad news is it's not, you know, as you can tell here, it's not, you know. Yeah. Uh, there's not the easy button. Yeah, and 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 that, like I said, we're gonna we'll walk out of here and have PhDs with uh, Microsoft licensing. So since you know Trevor mentioned it, one of the, one of the benefits of working with Integra is one, we are a Microsoft Gold partner, but more importantly, we're what's called a Microsoft Cloud Solutions partner. So that opens the door for a lot of options as far as licensing, especially if you're on the smaller tier of the scale or you're not looking to do a fixed price for a period of time. Um, so if you want that flexibility and be able to pay as you go um, and you, you don't really care about fixed prices and you're, like I said, I, I keep using Chrome as an example, you're Chrome shop and you're not using Exchange and whatever, you're just doing server OSs, maybe, maybe you don't need EA agreements, right? And so the, the final option is what's called a, whoop, click too, too far ahead, Let me go back again. My machine is getting a, its own a mind of its own so um so we're going to talk a little bit about what's called the microsoft cloud agreement through what's called a csp a cloud service provider all right and what's great about this is is this is is transactional it's an agreement term is, is one year your coverage is as needed so what's great about this is you can add and, and trevor keep me honest here but i think you can even add you know let's say i start off with 100 i can't you know let's say server os's and i can add 50 in the middle of the year is that fair to say yeah yeah so if we're talking uh we talk csp we're either we're talking there's that's made up of you know ex the o365 type subscriptions um then there's the software subscriptions like os sql licensing subscriptions rds uh, rds cal type subscriptions um and so there's kind of these different buckets and they're all kind of handled a little bit differently but like so with Office 365, uh, um, most subscriptions, it's yeah, you you can you can add add or remove during the month, you know, during the year, whatever. You, you pay for what you're using, you get prorated for what you know what you don't use. Um, yep. For like, let's say, server OS licensing subscriptions, um, yeah, you you have an option to pay it for a one year or a three year uh, subscription um, for for anything that comes under that software subscription bucket within CS within the cloud, um, you know, cloud offering. Yeah, and and and, and again, it, obviously, if you commit longer term, it gets you better discounting power, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and yeah. so typically, like, you, and that's if you're if you're doing Azure, um, you're typically going to do you're going to dive in. You know, we would dive in, and if you don't already have like some your OS licensing covered um, that you could bring over, then um, you you would go ahead and provision get your VM provision your VMs in Azure, but then you would also uh, you would purchase a subscription for a cloud OS subscription um, to go along with that Azure subscription for the OS licensing and that and you're going to get into that later I think with the hub conversation but yep. that's uh, that usually goes hand in hand when you're if you're going to do Azure yeah definitely and um, and then the other thing is a uh, question I had just because I, I was thinking about it as I was making this up but the software assurance that's maintained by the partner right so I, the reason why I put indirect is because, you know, we as a CSP get software assurance, correct? Or do you pay extra for that as a customer? Yeah, um, so that, that's, all, that's all included in the subscription. So when you get a subscription, it's not, yeah, it's not, there's nothing separate um, yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah, cool. And then, yeah, one of the things I like about this too is you can do monthly payments, you can commit for a year, and then as you said, you can also do a commit for three years as well. So it gives you more flexibility, pay as you go, and for smaller organizations, it's a it's a little more price friendly, right? Um, so again, um, and you know, someone asked a, a question, you know, is there better pricing for small hospitals? And um, I, I would argue that a hospital would classify as a commercial organization, even though if you have a .org, trust me, I've went through this, um, you're not considered a, a non-prof. Now there's ways, I think, other things to consider, but uh, definitely reach out. We can we can kind of do an assessment with you. Um, I think it's uh, Gotham, Gotham uh, hopefully I said your name right, uh, and definitely reach out. We can we can kind of take you through in more detail uh, and get your, get your requirements, because that's the thing, right? One of the other big things that plays into this is requirements. Um, and so what are you trying to get out of the licenses? I've sat on calls with Trevor and it's understanding, you know, how you're gonna use Office 365. And again, we'll talk a lot about that next week, but also what is your server OS look, makeup gonna look like? Are you gonna use Azure, are you not? Um, and typically a lot of customers who are looking at the CSP models because they're either migrating to Azure or they're looking to do a hybrid approach. Uh, and that's where, you know, sitting down with us and helping us understand the requirements will help you make the best decision. So, um, yeah. So, no, I. But just to make a point there, like so, with CSP, just a clarification. So, with Office 365 CSP, you there is commercial pricing, there's education pricing or academic, and then there is um, there's nonprofit. So, in your case, you know, Pete. Pete hit on it. Most hospitals, um, even though they don't necessarily qualify for for what um, for nonprofit for this, but um, it, 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 you know, we, but there are cases where that's that is not true. So um, definitely could you know talk through that. Yeah, and, and and like I said, it's it's a it's good to get on the phone with Trevor and and I or and or I, and we can kind of get your requirements. And Harvey, who's one of our SEs, is actually getting pretty good at this as well. Uh, so Trevor, just really summary, I think we've kind of, we've danced around it, but, um, you know, in your mind, what's the best benefit of licensing through a uh, CSP, uh, if you're, you know, under, under that threshold, um, and, and what do you, what do you, you know, what do you think the, yeah. the number one benefit is? Yeah. And, it, you know, just to kind of recap what, like, what, you know, I'm trying to make a decision. It's not, it's not a number, like it's not, Hey, I'm. 500 or under if I'm 500 or under I definitely need to go this direction it's not I think the the answer to the question is really um, comes into it, it it has more legs than that and you kind of just have to look look at to me it's complexity of your of your environment and your um, organization those, those two factors really and then and si size is obviously a, a component as well but it's really the complexity because I mean, honestly, I've, we, there's customers out there, you know, that enterprise customers doing CSP that, you know, that have three, four, five thousand seats. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not necessarily about the number. It's, it's, it's about the other. And does, does, does what CSP have to offer and what you need line up? And so 
CSP, for the most part, in general, it's more, it provides you flexibility. So you pay, basically pay for what you, um, you don't have to do it. There's no long-term agreement. Um, pay month to month. Um, remove ad. It, it, it's super simple. You get, you get an advisor um, to t- kind of take you through that and to help you with, you know, managing costs and, you know, giving you direction there. And you also, with no additional cost, you, and this is a big one, is that you get premier support. If you have an EA, you, you have to pay for that. That comes, you know, that's an additional cost for you. And with a CSP, you get the service provider providing, um, providing support with you alongside Microsoft. So that's, uh, that's, you know, that's a big, big item there. Um, and we, you know, you don't have to necessarily deal with an offshore, you know, call center, um, you know, during that support, which most people don't, don't care for. So, um, and I, yeah, I, I think those, you know, those are kind of the big thing. And there is, there is the ability to do discounting, um, which is, which is another, another plus here. It's, it's either inter, it's an EA agreement or a CSP if you want to, you know, get it, you know, be able to have the flexibility to do, you know, negotiate, um, you know, additional discounts. Uh, so, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of, kind of how it goes. I mean, I think it's, it's, again, it's not, you know, it's not the answer for, for everyone. Um, but it's definitely something that everybody needs to consider because, um, and, and things change like year to year with, you know, with this program, it gets, um, they add more to it. So some of the pro, some of the things that you get with EAs, let's just say an academic, like the academic EA agreements, they're very unique. They have different programs um, and entitlements for students and faculty. Well, even though CSP has academic licensing and 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 some of this stuff, they don't have every program that comes with that academic EA. And so I would say. You need to, you know, you just need to look at that, you know, factor that into your, you know, to your decision. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, but going forward, you, what you'll find is more, more and more people will be, will be going CSP just because it will make, make sense. Yep. Cool. And, um, yeah, so that, and like I said, Trevor has a lot of great insight and we've done a lot of these and I personally have been involved with a few and there it's oddly kind of interesting that, be involved because you get to understand how stuff works and in the decision tree process and all that good stuff. But so, all right, now, now that we've confused y'all and, and, you know, we want to add one more layer in is, you know, especially if you're considering Azure, there's another piece that you need to consider. And, um, and that's what's called the high Azure hybrid benefits, which is actually now called the hybrid use benefit hub. Um, and, and the biggest value of the hybrid benefit is the ability to not have to pay for the OS cost in Azure. And one of the things I, ha- I have another slide, but I don't want to kill everybody with slides today is if you were to look at the OS cost uh, across the board, that's the one thing that's never going to change. Right. And so compute is always going to change because that that's what you can control. You can control what size VM you pick, you know, what's your IOPS, how much data you're going to use ingress, egress, you can control that and you can control that cost. But what you can't control is the OS cost, and that's always going to be static. So whether you do a, a reserved instance or not, and if you don't have the hybrid benefit or not, if you don't have the hybrid benefit, reserved instance or not, you're always going to pay that that OS cost, right? And and so the hybrid benefit takes that that need to pay for the OS off the table, and you bring I like to say bring your own license to to add. Um, and so as an example. Um, here you can see there's significant savings um, when you look at you know without hybrid benefit and with hybrid benefit and these scenarios assume what's called a three-year reserve instance now reserved instances is a great way to save money as well but let's say you don't want to do a commit right you don't want to do a reserved instance um, you still want to have that hybrid benefit because you get rid of that that OS cost was which is a significant portion of your Azure cost um, so here's, you know, in, and it's hard to summarize and I hate word slides, but it was the easiest way to summarize this, but you know, the, the ha- hybrid use benefits, uh, is accessed in two ways. You can either purchase or subscribe to a windows server through your SA, 
Um, so again, working with Trevor and or your EA advisor, you can find out, hey, do I have access to this? And most people with EA should have access to it. You can double check it um, and, um, and or you could subscribe through to Windows Server through a CSP. So you can work with Trevor and team uh, to you know, set up the subscription and then you can you know, essentially take advantage of what's called the hybrid use benefit. Um, now you can, ex you can get it through the agreements that are on, on the slide. Um, so again, you know, definitely take a look at what you own, what your use cases are, and then go look at your agreements to make sure you're covered. Um, but you know, again, don't use this as the silver bullet. Say, oh yeah, I'm covered. Always look at your agreements, make sure you're covered. And if you have any questions, you definitely want to reach out. But the value here is simple. It's the ability to access a Windows server in one of two ways. You can, you can do standard and or data center. So you can obviously, you can pay for those licenses um, or, or subscribe to them. Um, and then once you do that, you, you get for every license, you get 16 physical cores. So you can do uh, two, you know, let's say, two, for example, two Azure virtual, machine, virtual machines with up to eight cores, or you can do one Azure virtual machine with up to 16 cores, okay? So again, yeah, there's that limitation, but, you know, but 16 core machine is pretty darn good. Um, and, and you can go on the Azure calculator and price this out. But again, this cost savings is significant. And, you know, um, and, and, you know it's definitely something to consider um you know as you start looking at uh you know the hybrid benefit and the hybrid benefit again the biggest value add is going to be that cost savings and if you layer on reserved instances versus non-reserved instances um that's where you see significant cost savings so you can get upwards of almost 80 percent savings with a three-year commit and a hybrid you know a hybrid use benefit um now that said you don't you can mix and match with the hybrid benefit. So you can say, hey, I'm not gonna do reserved instance um, on some and I'm gonna do reserved instance on others. The typical, the magic number I, I find is about 12 hours a day. Like if you're gonna run a virtual machine for more than 12 hours, typically you wanna start looking at reserved instances. If you're gonna be you know, stringent and make sure you're powering off machines or you have auto scale turned on for your VDI environments, then you, know, you may look at pay as you go. So there's a lot of different decision trees that you have to look at. And that's again, where Trevor and I can help you out in understanding how to navigate, you know, the hybrid use benefit. So what I'm gonna do is pause really quick and say, you know, hey, Trevor, what, what are the other considerations, you know, you think customers should think about? And, uh, you know, we had a really good example, you know, we can't say the customer name, but, you know, I, that I was involved with where we moved them from uh, an on-prem subscription of O365 and then cut them over to Azure and, and were able to get them better, not necessarily pricing, but just a better pricing structure from a licensing point of view, you know, so any other considerations you, you think we should think about as we're looking at cloud service provider plus hub? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I, um, you know, I, I mean, especially for, I mean, I think Azure every day we, we talk to customers that, um, you know, I, I think everybody kind of kind of dives in and then, um, you know, kind of focused on the engineering side and getting, you know, getting the solution working and, um, and then, and then they get a little bit of a sticker shock at some point or someone gets a call from someone. And, um, and, and that's where, that's where like hub, um, hybrid use rights really, you know, is, is, is one component, um, leveraging, you know, reserved instances properly. You know, it's not for every workload, but for the, for the right ones, um, and uh, I mean, I we had a customer, a bank out in out, out on the West Coast that you know was, had a two hundred thousand dollar Azure bill a month, and um, we were we were we were literally able to come in and and save them um, you know close to a hundred thousand uh, dollars a month just just doing you know just a handful of kind of these best practices. So yeah, there's there's lots of different ways and light and then the licensing. Uh, just doing just recommendations on what light what specific license when you kind of go over onto the software description and uh, 0365 side just making sure you're not you know overbuying or um, you know you're looking at your use user groups and getting the light the license that that makes the most sense and sometimes that answer is easier to get than others but that's kind of what we do so it's uh, 
I think there's usually a lot of room for, for you know, to for savings. Uh, so Trevor, yeah. a good question came in. Uh, we we were talking about this before we got on the call too. Um, can you can you highlight, or, and if we don't know, we can dig it up. Uh, you know, for you, Justin. But uh, um, you know, w like the E3. So if you have an enterprise agreement, you know, E3 or E5, you, you mentioned, you know, there's training benefits with that. Uh, can you do you know like what the training benefits are and entitlements are? Or do we have to dig that up potentially? Um. The training business for E3. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to look it up. I, I don't, I don't know right off the top of my head what, um, what those are. That's, and, uh, and I think you know. Know, this is Jody. So I think there's a couple of things to dive to dig into there to understand. One, one is technical training uh, from from a from an IT organization perspective. In other words, you know, learning about those solutions and how to deploy them. That that aspect. The other aspect is ACM or adoption and change management. So I would want I would want to understand from Justin which one which avenue he's thinking right because um, adoption and change management when it comes to to O and M three sixty five is absolutely critical and it's it's something that everybody's trying to do and quite frankly historically has a pretty poor success rate uh, with all the different solutions out there and that's key <clears throat> excuse me that's key to actually getting the value out of the investment that you're making so. So we get some clarity on 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 what he's asking there. Um, I think there's there's a couple of different answers. Cool. Well, yeah. Thanks for that insight, Jody. Um, cool. Uh, so yeah. So I think one of the biggest themes you'll see with the CSP is the flexibility. So if you're a small organization and you know you're contemplating, well, how the heck do I license Microsoft? You definitely want to reach out. Uh, and if you're a, even a larger organization, as you know, Trevor alluded to, you know, there's a big could be a big cost benefit savings. And I think the biggest question you need to find, you know, you really need to think about or find out if you don't know is, uh, is this a new agreement? Yes, no. And then there's other questions to ask, like, you know, around if it, if it is not a new agreement, then do you, are, do you already have an existing agreement in place? Uh, and do you qualify for like I said, there's like lots of different flows we can take uh, to kind of make sure you're making the right decision as far as uh, an EA agreement. Um, so again, a uh, little bit on Microsoft licensing here, and this is going to take a little bit of segue of, you know, why do we have Trevor on? Well, Trevor uh, runs what's called our uh, CSP side of the business, our MSP. And uh, as we're going through this, if I'm going to put a final call for questions. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to shoot in the Q&A dialog. We are paying attention to it. Um, and, you know, who is Integra? So Integra is a reseller. And the benefit of working with a partner like us is not only do we understand the product that we're talking about today, which is Microsoft, but we also understand the products within our stack. So, for example, if you're a Microsoft plus Citrix shop, you can work with Trevor and team to come up with a great end to end solution on not only implementing and or managing it for you, but also a support structure as well. And so, you know, it's a one kind of stop shop for support management and understanding and uh, so again, any vendor that I mentioned today, we, we can definitely resell. Now, what I can't resell is EA agreements. That, that's locked to a handful of vendors, but we do have our preferred partners. And you know, even if you're not working with one of those preferred partners, we can help you navigate some of the, the, the decision tree, if you will. Um, so Trevor Ross. Yeah, hey, Pete. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I just made a comment there. I mean, I think um, just so it's clear, I mean, what you'll find out there is, you know, Pete just said something. We're not able to trans EAs, but that we're we're not we're not here to to give you a single a single answer when it comes to this. So it's not every every road leads to CSP. I think you you might find that elsewhere um, out there, but we're really you know more looking at this from an advisory, making sure that it's the right fit. And so we, we've most of our you know we've got a lot of customers that are EA customers that we provide you know value on top of it and the. The example I provided earlier that the large, you know, the bank that was, you know, you know, all in in Azure, they, you know, we're, we're providing them, you know, consulting, consulting services and guidance around, around Microsoft. Um, so it's not, um, you know, part of doing business with us from a Microsoft perspective doesn't necessarily lead you to CSP. I just want to make that clarification. Yep. Um, Cool. And so Trevor runs what's called Zentegra Connect 
our Design Circuit Connect division, which is our MSP side of the house. And and I don't know about you guys, but I think we've all been here, done that, and nothing is worse than getting a phone call on the weekend or at night to try to troubleshoot an issue or downtime. So why, you know, why bother, right? And so that's the question you need to ask yourself is, you know, how do you optimize and enhance kind of your offering to your end users if you're doing Azure, you're doing Azure plus Citrix uh, and any of the other services I'm about to mention. So Trevor has a great team uh, based here in the US that, uh, you know, not only can support uh, getting Azure up and running in WBD and Office, et cetera, but also we can provide uh, tier two, tier three support, uh, you know, as needed. And so, so here's a handful of some of the managed services we offer. And you can see we offer a wide variety of different, you know, managed services. Uh, and these are our core services. So you can just see everything from, you know, Citrix managed services all the way down to backup as a service. And, you know, and we can bundle these together as one end-to-end -end solution as well. So just because you go Citrix managed service doesn't mean you can't layer in monitor. Um, and, you know, because you want to know what the heck's going on with your, your end user compute environment uh, or patching or endpoint. So there's a lot of different ways we can slice and dice the MSP offering. And, you know, you can work with Trevor and team to find out what fits you best. Uh, and then parallel to that, we offer a bunch of cloud hosted services as well. So we do, uh, we can do desktop as a service. Uh, we can do, we have our own infrastructure as a service. So we have our own private cloud that runs in Equinix um, and we can help you price, understand, you know, what, what's the ROI TCO and why you would do this versus maybe do Azure, right? Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do uh, working with Trevor and team to understand, you know, what's the best, best path forward if you are going to truly consider Azure. And one of the big things that's coming up and it's an interesting topic and working with Trevor is, you know, this whole notion around remote work, uh, but also running products like GoToWebinar or GoToMeeting or Zoom or Teams inside of a virtual machine. And, and Trevor has a great solution for that. And we're going to be highlighting that in the coming weeks. So uh, definitely keep, keep an eye out for that and a conversation that we're going to have around that. But that's another value add that you can get is, hey, how do you optimize the workloads so they meet your needs of your end users? Uh, and then finally, uh, just to you know, highlight, and these are some of the page you go mo monthly things. So again, you can bundle these in, uh, you know, one off, you can do a la carte, you can work with Trevor and team to be able to uh, find what's the best solution and build a nice stack that fits your needs. And we do this all the time for a lot of our core customers, but you can see we do a lot. And, you know, we offer a lot of great solutions, great products, and Centra is another great example of Office 365 backup as a service, uh, Office 365 fast track services, uh, et cetera. And we're able to provide as a service offerings uh, within the stack. So definitely, you know, if you're looking, you know, to get help on, hey, how do I manage my environment? How do I migrate to cloud? You know, I want to layer in some type of, uh, you know, VoIP or, or uh, meeting solution. Uh, you know, we, we cover a lot of the, the stack here. And one of the areas we're actually growing in as well is Cisco. So we're going to be expanding out into Meraki, uh, Cisco Core, uh, et cetera. So you'll start seeing us expand there. Uh, you'll start seeing us expand in some of the storage realm. So there's a lot of cool stuff we're doing uh, around at the page you go. Uh, so, you know, as I put the logo slide up, Trevor, did I miss anything and anything you want to add? No, I, th I think you covered it. I, um, but yeah, you know, the, the bottom line is is that we're obviously a very solution focused um, partner. Whether it's you know coming to help you with services for a project or support or um, or, or managed services. So you know, they're they're uh, we you know we're very focused, and I think that you know that that's where we we find success and just being able to. Um, not uh you know help help our customers not have to re you know re relive every every bad patch out there um every you know and and so just taking getting you know learning from learning from other customers and then implementing into kind of our blueprint that we provide out to our our customer base and that's it's kind of a huge huge thing for for most of our customers is to um you know not uh yeah, you know, just get, getting the most most success out of their their solution. Yep. And uh, so so this there's a great question that came in, and and this leads me into the the final few slides we got left. But 
uh, you know, Kevin asked a great question. Is there a, a free consultation available for existing Azure customers to review potential license savings? And, and Kevin, I'm just gonna say simple, yes. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, plan to set up time. That goes for anybody on this go to, go to webinar today. If you wanna sit down and dig deeper, you know, when you get that email from me that says, hey, set up some time with us, set up some time with us, you know, we'll take you through, we'll go through the use cases, we'll get Trevor, myself on the phone, and we can take you through where we could potentially see cost saving. And I'm telling you, you definitely want to set up time with Trevor and team because they'll find the ways to help save you money. And, and so the simple answer is yes, we can do it, you know, we can do a quick, you know, calls and dig in to help you understand where you can save uh, money uh, in your licensing and, and where your gaps are potentially. So again, we do offer assessments. So if you're an end user compute environment, we do VMware and Citrix. If you're a networking, everybody has networking on this call, we do a free networking assessment. So if you're looking at cloud, I highly recommend you take a look at your network and understand what does your WAN look like? What does your core networking look like? So we offer a free assessment for that. So look for that email as well. And then finally, I jokingly say, are you hiring? And if you answered yes, and you need help finding candidates, definitely reach out because we have a full staffing division uh, as part of Zentegra. And we went into this area because listen, you know, between Andy, myself, Andy, our CEO, myself, Trevor, our networks are huge and we can pull from our, our networkings, but we also build trust with you. Um, so as you become more strategic and, and vice versa, we can find you, you know, proper people for the jobs you're hiring for in your IT, uh, you know, staff. And, and one of the things I love is sometimes I get to interview the folks. So, you know, between Trevor and I, we'll, we'll sometimes interview them and, and, we'll, and you, when, by the time they hit your desk, you know they've been vetted pretty well. Uh, so again, if, are you hiring? If you answered yes, uh, let us know. We might have a great way to work with you, get you temporary, uh, you know, staff aug. We can do temp to hire and we can do full-time hire as well. Um, so again, anything I talked about, definitely reach out. But if you want to dig deeper and understand your licensing a little bit more, um, especially if you're on the fence of do I go EA or not, or hey, I'm net new and I got to understand Azure, definitely reach out. We can take you through um, the uh, how to navigate the muddy waters that is Microsoft licensing. Um, so with that, I'm gonna do one final call for questions and I'm gonna end on my, my, my contact slide so you can see our emails here. Um, but I'll also do a final call for Trevor, you know, any final thoughts or inputs that you wanna give before we take off for the day? You know, you know, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm speechless, not really, but I, I think you know, I'm good. I, I uh, really appreciate you putting this together and uh, I think it was, you know, hopefully it was helpful for everybody and appreciate everybody j jumping on today for sure. Cool. And Jody, any, any final thoughts from you and, and looking forward to having you on next week to talk to Office 365 as well. Yeah, just, just a thanks to everybody joining and, and just to reiterate something that Trevor made, uh, made a point of, it, it's important to have an advocate. Uh, licensing in general is challenging, has always has been from a Microsoft perspective. Um, really important to have a have a good advocate. And, and look, one of the reasons we work with Integra is philosophically, we all come from the client side of the business <laughs> and, or, of this industry, right? Meaning that we work for end user organizations. And, and so we are aligned perfectly in the sense that our collective goals is actually to help customers navigate all this crap. <laughs> so, so having that, having the right advocate working on your behalf, really that understands all the different complexities associated and, and the rapid change pace associated with Azure in particular. All those things combined, you really need a strong advocate to help you navigate all of that and ultimately, um, you know, keep your costs as low as possible. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And uh, so with that, I'm going to say thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, and that's our webinar Wednesday for this week. Uh, again, definitely join us next week. We're going to be talking Office 365, the future of Exchange, you know, to, uh, was it 2019 now? and things you gotta consider when you're looking at Office 365, and then we'll highlight Fast Track as well. So if you don't know some of or all, definitely join us next week, uh, and we're gonna be highlighting that. And we have, again, a great lineup in the month of August, so definitely check out our site for the, the next the up and coming vendors we're gonna be featuring. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you for joining us, and as I always say, see you guys all on the flip side, and have a great rest of your weeks.